And we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake, and believe it or not, Ubisoft is back with another Assassin's Creed. Can you believe it? Eh, I got some things to say about this one. So just so you know, we've been playing a review copy sent to us by Ubisoft, and the footage captured here is running on PlayStation 5, and I've kept it spoiler free. So Mirage is significant because it's a break from the trend of the last three main Assassin's Creed games. Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla shed the weight of their predecessors to become these big, sprawling, 100-hour open-world action RPGs. Now, Mirage brings it back down to basics. You're in the Middle East, you're simply an assassin, wearing a white hood with a few tools, the map isn't massive, and you can beat the game in a reasonable amount of time. For me, I've been a fan of these games since day one. I loved all the original style games, even with their sometimes significant flaws, because there wasn't really anything else like them out there at the time. The newer games, Odyssey, Origins, Valhalla, like I acknowledge that they are technically good, but just not what I was looking for from an Assassin's Creed game. So Mirage sounded like just what I was looking for. Now, to be frank, this game feels like the middle ground between the two Assassin's Creed styles. I don't love it. I don't hate it, but it's a step in the right direction. It feels way more in line with a classic Assassin's Creed game in terms of focus and gameplay scenarios, but with the parkour, the combat, and certain elements, it still kind of feels like the newer games. Not as precise as I'd like. Just kind of watered down a bit, you know? It's hard to put my finger on. Maybe it's just the gameplay feel of the games it's trying to emulate, Maybe it's a bit of nostalgia, but that's just me. That's my bias up front. If you go in expecting Assassin's Creed 2 or a 4 or something like that, not quite. But if you play the newer games and are looking for a change of pace from them, and you've only played those, then this is a decent one. But what's the deal here? So in this, you play as Basim, a character significant to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but at least at the start of the game here, he's just a fresh face. A young guy yearning to be an assassin, you know, your typical Assassin's Creed protagonist. You get to experience him as a character in a standalone story, at least sort of for a minute, and you watch him progress from young street thief guy to apprentice assassin to full-on master assassin. And the story and his clothing will reflect that. And now, like I said, he is a former street thief, but he's like quick-witted and he's a bit funny and lighthearted, but also intensely, almost naively idealistic. Things get pretty rough for him after an intro and he is conscripted into the hidden ones, the assassins. And you join him to link up with them, learn and rid Baghdad of bad guys. Of course, it gets more complicated than that. It's Assassin's Creed. But uh, it does work because of Basim and a, a few distinct characters surrounding him. They seem to actually give a damn. And then there's Baghdad itself, the setting. It's a cool backdrop. One that's got a familiar feeling to Assassin's Creed, like classic, and even like the wide open deserts and rivers and farms from Egypt in Origins. But it still manages to feel distinct on its own, especially in certain districts as you get deeper into the city and see detailed palaces and markets, and there's like where they make clothing, where mercantile happens, where commerce happens. It's cool to see. And the map isn't super massive. It's essentially centered around a big city with a little couple of surrounding outposts and some desert and some fields. It's explorable enough. It is just open world enough. This is where I think it feels a lot more like the open worlds of old Assassin's Creed games, which weren't really always technically open, but yeah. The story is told through cutscenes that aren't always very thrilling, and some characters emote a little awkwardly here and there in, in, in cutscenes and stuff, but generally I like the voice acting and the language options are pretty cool. Now the story isn't super epic or memorable, but a little bit of intrigue helps, especially if you finished Valhalla. Uh, there's a little extra depth to kind of getting to the bottom of Basim as a character. It's the characters that help it along and uh, really the pacing. You're always off doing the next thing, and that is typically sneaking around and taking out dudes. Uh, Mirage is centered around stealth. The stealth is simple, and the guards are still hopelessly dumb, but it still manages to be somewhat satisfying. If you're familiar with these, then you get the gist. You know, you're hiding in bushes, you're crouching and climbing around, you're whistling to trick dudes to come over to you and stab them in the face, and then you're running away, you're parkouring through the streets, trying to break line of sight and hide. 
The game embraces some traditional Assassin's Creed elements too, like sitting on a bench to blend in or standing in a crowd to disappear a bit. You can also use certain groups of people to your advantage, like in the older games. In those games, you'd spend money to get people to do your bidding, like have a couple of tough guys start a fight for you or pay some dancing ladies to distract the guards. And in this game, it's changed up a bit. You have to hand these people a special kind of token, like a kind of unspoken little thing that says in the community, hey, this guy is good. He's trying to do the right thing. Help him out. So how you get these is by exploring the environment, finishing small tasks, finding hidden stuff and pickpocketing people. This special token can also be spent on like a merchant to get access to goods at a discount, which is nice. Now, the main thing you are gonna be spending money on is uh, to refill your tools of the trade. Basm has a small tool set that you can slowly unlock by progressing through the game. It's just a handful of stuff, you know, throwing knives, a noisemaker, a powdered smoke bomb thing, uh, blow darts. These are straightforward, good assassin tools but they can actually be upgraded at your assassin bureaus in a fun little way. You can spend collected resources to unlock three tiers through the course of the game. And each tier has three choices within of which you can only choose one attribute, say like make your throwing knives stronger or maybe make them more poisonous. The choice is yours. And those choices are kind of good and fun. And as you unlock more of those tiers, uh, you can kind of tailor the tools a little bit in your own special way. Uh, you also have a focus meter that allows you to not too far into the game, access a kind of mark and execute ability where you can target multiple enemies and then hit a button and Basm zips between them, killing them all pretty instantly. It's a bit weird, but it's something different. There's also a skill tree, which is straightforward and simple. You can spend points in one of three branches to unlock stuff like chain assassinations or a stun kick or breaking your fall, carrying capacity, all stuff that feels kind of meaningful. Nothing to just fluff or padded out filler stuff. I like a skill tree where everything you unlock feels worthwhile and they got it here. It's a decent skill tree. You're finding weapons and costumes out there, but it's not a loot fest. Most of the time is spent actually finding resources and unlocking blueprints to just upgrade your sword or your dagger or your clothing with a couple of perks and stat upgrades. You know, you're not swapping to a new sword because you're picking up a new one every five minutes. And I like that. The way these systems work, it's not massive. It's not overly complicated, but it works well enough. And you're using your tools and the skills you unlock for missions. Missions that, more often than not, are nicely open-ended. It typically goes like this. You roll up on a place, and then from there, it's up to you to choose how to attack. Use your bird in the sky to like scout out enemies and find possible secret entrances or exits, and then jump in to either steal something and get in or kill a key figure and escape. There are usually multiple ways to do things, like draw out a key enemy by doing a side objective, if you can even find that side objective, or setting up a trap or, or maybe just, you know, perfect stealthing the whole thing. It's another thing, like it's not overly complex. And like I said, a lot of the enemies feel like dummies when you're taking them out one by one so easily, so systematically just by standing in a bush, you know? It's kind of like how Assassin's Creed has been for a while. I, a lot of it does work on a notoriety system. So uh, as you do bad things in public or in front of enemies, your notoriety builds and uh, that's when you're more easily recognized and pursued. You can you always bribe a town speaker or tear down wanted posters to reduce your notoriety. Does that feel, sound familiar? They knew what they were doing here. This, this is like totally trying to capture that old feel. Now, uh, there are some rough control problems. It actually kind of reminds me of the old Assassin's Creed games where you'd run up the wrong thing or fall to your death by jumping the wrong way. The parkour isn't perfect. It isn't super precise. It's also not super fast either, which I don't usually mind. Some of the assassins in these games start out a bit chunkier and slower, but here it just feels slow and also not exciting. Some of the other games when you were a slower assassin, it was still cool. Here, it's just a bit boring. I don't know if it's like Basm's sprint, the sense of momentum, I don't know. Maybe it's the design of the landscapes you're running on. Just something about the feel of it is a bit off. The same goes for the actual hidden blade stabbings. They just don't feel right. Like, not super precise or satisfying to nail, and the animations sometimes feel kind of all over the place. The momentum just isn't right when you're stabbing a guy while walking. They used to have those nailed perfectly. And now the 
assassination things, it, like, it just doesn't feel great to stab a room full of dudes. You used to feel like such a badass. And I think this is ultimately indicative of what Assassin's Creed Mirage is. It is something that was essentially intended to be a Valhalla spin-off DLC that they decided to branch off and make it its own fully fleshed out game. But it is still the framework of the new Assassin's Creed game. So it's still not going to feel as back to its roots as some people were hoping, myself included. Granted, that comes down to expectations and stuff, but I can only judge it as one person. I am a consumer just like you, so that's kind of where I'm really at with it, though. But at the very least, I do like that there is an emphasis on the stealth, and sieging some of these big bases or castles or strongholds is pretty good. I had a good time with it, and I had a good time with, like, the subcontract stuff, where a lot of the times it's just to go steal something and return it. I like the way those flowed. It's not like a deus ex or a thief or anything like that complex, but at the very least it succeeds in that. And where it does kind of maintain that old school feel, specifically to my memory, Assassin's Creed 1, is that the combat is not great. The combat I, I really don't like. It's very simple. It's like a watered down version of the newer games, uh, but you have an attack, a heavy attack, and a parry and a dodge, and it just does not feel very good, it feels very exchangey, but like the very old games, you're kind of just waiting for somebody to swing at you and then you parry it at the right time and then that opens them up for a cool one-shot stabby finishing animation. I, I like that. That's not gonna work for everybody, man. Like, I liked the combat in the first Assassin's Creed even though it was technically bad. The killing people in one shot was cool. So here in 2023, some people are gonna need stuff a little more complex. I don't know about you. It it's really gonna come down to how you feel. So watch some more gameplay videos of combat to kind of get an idea of it. You can tell I'm wishy-washy on everything with this game. It, it's just all right. Where the game does really succeed, again, is the fact that it does kind of commit to stealth and also the culture. Showing Baghdad, showing historic Muslim culture, like all this stuff going on here, stuff that you don't see in a lot of games, so it's nice to have perspective. Because at the end of the day, even with a lot of the flaws this game has, it still has what I want from a classic Assassin's Creed game, like a, a historical setting that you can totally get lost in and you're walking around in a white hood and you're stabbing people. Granted, it gets a lot more complicated than that, but if you're looking for a simple Assassin's Creed, you have it here. I am not head over heels in love with it, but I would love the series to go back in this direction. I know not everybody agrees with me, and some people really take issue with how I talk about the modern Assassin's Creed games, but hey, I'm just one person. We all have different thoughts on games. And really, this is a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion, and now I want to hear yours down in the comments. How do you feel about the franchise? Are you one of the people who just got into the newer big action RPG games? Do you only like the old games? Are you a weirdo like me? And what are you expecting from Mirage? Let's talk about anything at all Assassin's Creed and Assassin's Creed Mirage down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. But if this video helped you out, you know, seeing the gameplay and, and just getting some insight, if it helps steer your decision, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. But if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. Either way, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.